the value? I, I guess how would, I, how would you describe your relationship with Coach Rashid as guys who've been together a long time, original staff members here, and how that's helped that defensive line be so consistent? Yeah, you know, I think first and foremost, I think she does a great job with his guys. Um, you know, takes great pride. Uh, in that group, um, first and foremost. Um, and when I first got to Toledo and first met Coach, um, man, definitely a group of that D-line group was a tight-knit group. And he's developed that ever since. And you learn to kind of get into that and understand it. And, and uh, But, you know, our relationship's grown over the years to, to way past football. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, he's an excellent coach, better person than coach. Um, Incredible human being, and you know I respect that about him. And he gets his guys to play really hard. Coach, what makes a good game for your group on Saturday? Well, you know I think you know this group's interesting. That that you know, um, <clears throat> I think the group that we're playing is really mentally and physically tough when you watch them. And I, I give a lot of credit to Coach. I, I don't personally know him. Obviously, I coached in that conference, so I understand. Um, you know, how, how talented the conference is, how tough it is, um, how tough you have to be to get through it. Um, and I think that's what you see on videotape from this group. Um, so I think it's going to be a great test for our guys uh, physically and mentally because I think they're both of that. I, I think they play physically tough. Um, the backs run downhill. The tight ends are, I mean, they, they try to smash you. And, um, you know, I just think that's how they play the game. And then you know, they play well into the fourth quarters. And, and so they're mentally tough. And so I think it's a great challenge for our guys. And, and I think, you know, for me to feel decent about it, I, I think we're going to have to mental, you know, we're going to have to match their mental and physical toughness. And I think it's a great challenge for our guys. Um, you know, the, the, they've, they've done a great job there and a lot of respect for them. How do you see mindset, mood, anything kind of shift for guys, players? from going from camp into the preparation for week one? Um, I mean, it'd be silly to say that it doesn't change because you, you practice for so many months and days to play 12. So it does shift a little bit. You hope that it doesn't shift a lot. You hope that preparation is um, their purpose and their habits have, you know, since last January, since the season was over, you hope that, you know, all the habits and structure and everything they've been doing to get to this point lines them up to have a good week of preparation in order to play. So you hope it doesn't change a lot, but you also know no different than us. And we only get 12 guarantees of this, and you practice for 300 and however many days uh, mentally and physically to do it. So it does change a little bit. It's exciting. Um, you know, it's football season. It's here. And, um, you know, our guys are excited about it. But I think deep down you hope that their process doesn't change and, you know, they just continue to keep trying to get better and better every day. Knowing that there is going to be that change, even if it's not monumental, how do you try to use that to your advantage as a team or a coach? Uh, well, good question. Um, you know, I, I just think that, you, you have to still go do what it takes to have success. I mean, you, you, you have to get lined up on, on our side of the ball. You, you have to get lined up. Uh, you know, they run a lot of tempo, and, and we know we've had to study, you know, three different schools to try to figure out what we're going to get in this game, and we, we don't always know. Um, you know, we've gone as far back as Southern Illinois to, you know, Winona State to, you know, what they're doing at North Dakota. So um, trying to understand a little bit. So you have to have great principles um, and, and concepts and fundamentals. Um, and so I think you just rely on all of that stuff uh, in order to keep it simple enough that they can understand and you can fix problems that happen because there'll be stuff that we have not practiced. Um, it happens every game, actually, uh, and especially in the defense that we play. And now that we're playing four down and some of that stuff, there'll be some different things that happen to us out there that, that you know, are different. You mentioned your experience coaching at this level in this conference. If you put yourself in the shoes of maybe their head coach or their defensive yeah. coordinator when you get an Iowa State on the schedule, what do you anticipate seeing out of a team like that? Well, I, I think those guys, and I've been that team. You know, we had gone to Penn State, uh, we had played at Ohio State, uh, we had played at Pitt. Um, so I, I think you know those guys. Um, and, and I guess again, to me, it goes back to who they are, and I think that's where I think you see Coach Swig like Coach Swigert's his his print is on that team. Like they're tough. Like they don't, they're not going to be shocked to come into Iowa. Like they're coming here to win, and. 
I think in the games that I've coached, we went there to win too. And you go do the things that you do best. Uh, you rely on the same things that you always do. And, um, you know, I think all those guys, will they'll come here and play just like you watched them play, you know, really since he's been the head coach there. I think they're going to play hard. And, um, you know, again, we're going to have to match all that stuff. And then, you know, we're going to have to execute and play well. Three starting linebackers from the state of Iowa. I'm not sure that how many times that's happened that you've been in Ames. But what does it mean to those guys like uh, – an Ebel or a Bacon or McLaughlin to to be that. Yeah, I, I think it means a little extra. It's home, you know. I, I think this is home. I think any time that um, in any program I've ever, ever been in, um, you know, I think the hometown kids, the home kids, you know, it just means more. Um, and, and it doesn't mean it's not taking away from others, but man, you grew up here. Um, a lot of our guys grew up Cyclone fans, and now they're getting a chance. They grew up on the hill, you know, and they're getting a chance to, to live dreams, and uh, it means the world to them, and, and they'll play like it, and they, they, they have done that. Certainly they have some experience and skill positions. they got a you know, receiver who's done yeah. a lot. They think they're leading two rushers from last year, but they've also got a quarterback who I think all the videotape you have of him is from one game. What's the challenge of that with the new guy? And what You've talked about the attitude these guys bring into the game. A guy like that, small town, hasn't really ever been on this stage, probably brings it as much as anyone. Yeah, I think, you know, I think they'll, again, you, you don't have 100% sure what's going to go on. But, um, you know, I think the wideouts is good a guy that we play against. I mean, though, that guy could play anywhere in the teams that we play. Um, you know, tremendous guy. The running backs are very physical downhill. Uh, again, they look like guys we play against. And the tight ends, for sure, are, uh, and they've got a whole whole group of them, uh, very similar to our guys. So um, you'll see physical um, up front. You know, I, I just think you're going to see downhill game. And, um, you know, they've been, they run tempo. They, they do all the different things that, that force you to be, um, you know, you, you have to be on it on Saturday. And our guys are going to have to get lined up, get lined up fast. They're going to have to be aware of the quarterback. He's a skilled guy. He's athletic. Uh, he's tough. And, um, you know, you, you just, those guys present problems too. They run the football. They, they run all the, you know, quarterback runs, um, you know, and stuff we've prepped for and we've studied all summer. And, you know, we're just trying to figure out the balance to, to where it all is going to be. But, um, you know, I think it, it creates some challenge because they do have, have really skilled and good players. Hey, Coach. So the, with this being the first season without players like TJ Tampa and Gary Vaughn, you know, players who have been with this program <laughs> for years now, yeah. what has it been like for those players in, that, in those respective position groups to really step up for this season? I, I think it's been exciting for them because they had great leaders. You know, they watched guys like TJ, how they prep and they play and how they practiced. And, and then in turn, you know, what that, what that led to. And I think that's what's important. You know, sometimes you need to see it and believe it. And, and I think our guys have watched – you know, guys like TJ and, you know, even as far back as Jake Hummel and, um, you know, Gary Vaughn. I mean, those guys were great preparation guys. They practiced, uh, they prepared off the field, they lived um, this place. And uh, our guys have had great examples to follow. And it's fun to watch them. You see a guy like Darren Porter and, and Tez and, and Miles Purchase. I mean, you see those guys growing from, from being around those guys. So it's been awesome to, to watch. Um, Bo Fairler elected as a captain for the second time. You're obviously his defensive coordinator. What makes him someone that you guys as a staff and his teammates believe in leading this group? Well, <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, he, he's, he's been here, played as a young guy, uh, got a lot of reps. Uh, but I think who he is in the building is probably, um, you know, if you could say anything about him, it, it, it's probably the most incredible part of him, you know, who he is around the rest of the team in the locker room and the meeting rooms in the back. Um, tremendous leader, uh, you know. There's not a guy on the on the in the locker room or in the op buildings that he doesn't talk to or communicate with. Or, um, you know, I, I think captains are guys, leaders are guys that bring other people together, and then they make everybody else better because of who they are and what they do. And I think, you know, when you look at um, really that whole group of captains, they all do that. They all bring people together. They are uniters. Um, they are together people. The team is really important to them. Um, and then they elevate everybody else's play as well as their own. In Las yeah. Vegas at Big 12 Media Days, um, Coach Campbell called Bo an anchor and a warrior spirit for your defense. Mm -hmm. How do you see him embody those character traits? 
Um, work ethic, um, emotion, passion for the game, a passion for people. Um, you know, he, he, he just is a passionate guy. He loves, loves being around people. He loves being around the locker room. He loves being in the meetings. He loves practicing. He loves hard stuff. Um, the harder it gets, the better Bo plays. And I think those are the things that, that would say that, man, that, you know, when it gets really tough, Bo plays his best. And that's, that's a warrior spirit. John, from the defensive line, what would you specifically like to see out of that group in this first game? Well, we're going to play, obviously, you know, with what we're doing up front, we're going to play um, large numbers of people. Um, so we'll play groups there. Um, we'll roll guys in and out throughout the process. Uh, expect those guys again to, you know, again, be physical up front. It's going to be physical up there. Um, also going to have to trans in the, transition into some pass game, you know, with all the boots and nakeds and rolls and things. Uh, so our guys are have to, going to have to be on it. And, um, you know, I, I think just being able to, to be assignment sound, you know, we're, we're going to have to, we're asking those guys to do a lot of different things. And so they're going to have to be on it mentally and, um, you know, eliminate the missed assignments and the errors and those kind of things, which will allow us all to play better. Darian Porter, Miles Purchase on an oar line there at one of the cornerback mm -hmm. spots. Is that more of kind of an indication of the camp that Darian's had instead of maybe necessarily a knock on Miles? Yeah, they, they've played both of them. Have played really good football this camp. Um, you know, and you know, you look at a guy like DP who again was kind of behind TJ, um, and then all of a sudden now has gotten more opportunities and with more repetitions has improved. And I, I think it's been a great battle, I think, between all three of those corners. Um, you know, those guys have, man, every single day, you know, they just play and play and compete and compete. And uh, I think they've all done a great job. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Appreciate you all.